Cost Disease of American Healthcare. This essay was dated January 26, 2010. The professor was Dr. Jim Walshied of the University of Arkansas, Fort Smith. The course was Economics 2803, Principles of Macroeconomics. The assignment was to read a blog by the author of the textbook, Greg Manthew. The blog is gregmanthew.blogspot.com. In the January 17th edition of the New York Times, David M. Herzenhorn, or have pronounced his name, provided a, quite an alarming assessment of the costs involved with the American healthcare system. I found it to be a well thought out article, but I believe he left out a few quirks of the system that might have a bearing upon this discussion. First, as always, remember that as a fledgling social scientist, my main concern is always going to be the moral and sociological concerns involved with the discussion. The moral question regarding health care is obvious. Do we, as a society, have a moral obligation to provide health care for all of our citizens? And if the answer is yes, does this obligation to provide health care extend to the people who engage in deliberately hazardous activities, such as unsafe stunts, smoking while pregnant, driving recklessly, or, dare I say it, eating fast food every day of their miserable existences upon this earth? At what point do we hold individuals responsible for their own acts of misconduct? Should safety-minded law-abiding tax-paying citizens bear the brunt of providing health care for people who only become concerned about their spiraling costs of health care when it's their own bodies who are about to go under the knife? Second, is the spiraling cost of health care not, in fact, a product of the health care system itself, but a product of the sheer greed of pharmaceutical companies and insurance agencies who charge such a high price for their goods and services that the cost to the average citizen is prohibitively high? Are we paying healthcare professionals too much, or is their pay commensurate with their indebtedness to the high cost of medical school plus the high cost of malpractice insurance? What would happen to provide government subsidies to pay for medical school and get rid of the concept of malpractice, that is, have a doctor become criminally negligent in the case of a major mistake, instead of passing the cost off to some insurance company. Third, perhaps we should stop comparing apples to oranges, or comparing our healthcare concerns to those of Europe or Japan, as the article suggests, but never really explains. Perhaps we can draw some lessons from Canada or the other countries that provide all-encompassing healthcare, but would need to carefully examine those applications of their coverage to the laws, culture, and economy here in the United States. We need to figure out what works here, not what works in some other way in some other countries with some other country citizens. Finally, our politicians need to get off their fracking butts. I know this is a significant and perpetual problem. It didn't stop with the health care debate, and it certainly won't end with it. Our politicians need to stop being lazy and do their jobs to provide for their constituents. Either that or we constituents need to pressure our elected officials. Maybe the threat of a recall election would provide us with a viable and equitable health care reform. <laughs>